guys, welcome to The Medical Method. Today I'll be doing a video on the MMI again, uh, going through some general tips and filling in the blanks of the stuff that I haven't covered so far. So, I'll start off with general tips um, and sort of ways to improve your MMI performance instantly. So the most important thing to do in your MMI is to be calm and be yourself. Do not construct lies, do not falsify anything, okay? Because the more you sort of appear to be making a false sort of agenda, it's going to really show through. Um, there was one question where, which I'll go through after, actually no, screw it, I'll go through it now, it's just the easiest way. So one of the questions that I haven't covered so far was the fact that they asked you what you would do given a sum of money um, in terms of like public health. So literally word for word, she said, I'm going to give you a $10,000 grant and you have to go into the community and do something with that money that's going to help medical more widely, okay? And I was completely thrown and to be honest, I hadn't really clearly thought out how to go through it. Now, there's sort of two ways to take it and I started off badly and sort of fixed it in the end. So I started off saying that I would do an Aboriginal health project, which I would, but it probably wouldn't be my first, the first thing I would go to because I don't have much experience in Aboriginal health, but I do know a bit about rural Victoria and that kind of thing. So I'd probably do rural health. But I thought Aboriginal health would sort of show my diversity a bit more than rural. And with that, it's, I sort of called myself out because I was running out of information because I hadn't researched the topic very well. Now this is where, if you get stuck with a question that you're not sure about, stick to your guns and make sure that you sort of only do the things that you know about. But having said that, you have to be, you have to really think about sort of showing that you have extension of thought. So she told me that she only give me $10,000 grant, okay? Now if you really think about it, $10,000, that's a limited amount of money. I mean, how much can you really do with $10,000? I mean, I could probably, you might be a higher doctor for a couple of weeks max. Um, you might be able to buy some medicines, that sort of thing. So going with the Aboriginal health thing, I basically said that I'd go into some sort of community and fund the existing doctor's position because they're going to know more about the situation than I did. So I sort of had a monologue to myself in the question saying, oh shit, I wouldn't know anything going into an Aboriginal community, but who would? So obviously the doctors who are there are going to know what they need. And then I sort of got to ground to a halt and she said, what else could you do? You know, like I'd already explained that, okay, I'd find medicines, new equipment, blah, blah, blah. And then I think the key to this question, if you get any question with, where you're given money or some sort of um, imbursement to go and work in a community or help others, I said I'd use it as a precedent to get more funding. Now, I knew straight away she'd been blank the whole time, but she suddenly smiled and nodded her head as if I'd said something that was right. So when you get given a public health question, make sure that you, because tax resources, while it's not infinite, there is a lot of tax resources and they're always trying to find ways to sort of implement rural policies and Aboriginal policies in practical ways. So whenever you get a question where you're given a sum of money, use, use whatever small example you take as a precedent for other situations. So I said helping this doctor can be used as a precedent to help more doctors in other rural settings, etc. Okay? So, so that's sort of two in one. So that's how to answer those public health questions. And secondly, try not to lie because it really gets you into a hole quickly. Um, okay, secondly, second tip. You really have to sort of take the person that you're talking to, your interviewer, from the first moment. So you, you've probably all heard that jargon that, you know, 10 seconds and a person's already made their decision about whether they're going to like you or not, all that business. But first impressions really do count. So what I sort of did in my head, I thought that I imagined that I was public speaking and I was trying to win a competition, right? So I opened the door and I'd jump in with like heaps of enthusiasm, grab the person's hand, not too forcibly, but definitely grab their hand, give it a firm shake and say, like, hi, my name's Tom, like, great to meet you, what's your name? Sort of take control of the situation, be dominant. That's an important thing. It's easier for me because I'm quite tall and I'm a guy. Um, but 
if you're a, a softer personality or a shorter guy, um, if you're a pretty gentle, shy person, you really have to show that you have dominance. I think it's a key thing because doctors have to have the ability to command situations, command multiple people. Um, not saying that there isn't room for collaboration, but especially in this setting, you want, you want the interviewer to feel like you're in charge, not they're in charge. Because if they feel like they're just asking you questions casually and you're in control of the situation, then they're more inclined to agree with things that you're saying because you're coming from a position of height. If you are sort of falling back and taking prompts and everything that is led by them, they also feel that they have control over your destiny in medicine. They are more inclined to give you worse grades and it sort of flows on from there. So try and be confident and dominant from the start, okay? Even saying things like, oh, I like your watch or like something irrelevant. I know it seems stupid, but it makes a difference because it makes it more sort of conversational from the beginning. And that was important in all my interviews. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones I haven't done. So there was ethics. We've already gone through that. Why medicine? Um, I, think, I think I'll stop the video there. It's been long enough. Um, some other tips. Don't dress too formally. Um, so in particular, I, I rocked up in a suit, okay? Now, I purposely chose a blue suit. I tried to, I wore a yellow shirt. I was trying to be different from the start. And when I got there, it was sort of like, like a Stepford population. Everyone had black suits, everyone had white shirts, and everyone had simple business ties. This is my personal opinion for an MRI. Be professional, but dress it down a bit. So I wouldn't wear a jacket, I wouldn't wear a tie. Just wear something nice and wear something open. If you're, if you're a lady out there, I'd do something similar. Dress it down a bit, don't wear a suit jacket, okay? There's a difference between being professional and too formal. Because being formal, you're sort of, again, from the start, you're making sort of a sterile relationship. You want it to be like a friend sort of style conversation rather than an intense sort of strict interview format, okay? So dress it down. Don't lie. That's how to answer public health questions. And just most of all, try to enjoy the situation as much as um, possible. I think that clears it up. Comment, rate, subscribe. Email me any questions you have. I might make another video. Um, I'll definitely do some more GAMSAT videos, but in terms of the MMI, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Thanks for watching and see you later.